Hi, everybody. This is Otis Bradley from 50green.com TV. This is the second of 50 things you can do to green your home now. These are little tips. Today's tip is Urban Crete. What is Urban Crete? Well, many of you have probably seen this from the uh, free video we have on the design and construction of Casa Verde. This is a kind of free form patio that was built out of Urban Crete. You can see actually this yard slopes up and it's kind of built into the ground. Some of the rocks here. Uh, we built a little fire pit and sort of a garden wall. Slightly retained some of the hillside. So what is Urban Crete? Well, Urban Crete is just that. It's chunks of old concrete. Where do you get it? Well, you can get it all over the place. Concrete is one of the biggest materials used in construction for obviously foundations, but also for roadways, sidewalks, driveways, building slabs. What you want to do is keep your eyes open in your neighborhood. This is actually how I found the concrete for the project I just showed you. I was driving around. I saw some guys pulling out an old driveway. When you see one of these containers, it's about two feet high. This is called a low boy versus the high boys, which are about eight feet high, those big metal containers. They use these because the weight of the concrete is so much that uh, they, they can't fill up a whole eight footer. So you'll see these guys chopping up a driveway, putting it in here. These little chunks can be anywhere from three inches thick to six or seven inches thick. You, you, you want to, the thinner the stuff, the three inch stuff is better because it gets really, really heavy. So you want to look for generally residential driveways. Sidewalks are good because sidewalks oftentimes do not have rebar in it. Sometimes driveways have rebar or metal mesh that you have to cut out or work around, but that's not a problem. Also, concrete companies often recycle concrete, and you can, I've even seen it for sale in landscape stores where they sell, you know, various types of other landscape stone, mined stone. They now are actually packaging up concrete and selling it as a garden product. But if you look around, there are a lot of, you know, you can call demolition companies, call local demolition companies, call local concrete contractors. Oftentimes they remove and reinstall driveways and just keep your eyes open. It's, there's tons of it around. Okay, so why is it green? Well, there are a number of reasons. Number one, we are reusing a product. We're not going out there and mining raw material. Number two, we're keeping it out of the landfills. Something like 70% of the landfill material is construction related. We're keeping it out. That's green. And thirdly, there's very little embodied energy if you get it locally. It, hopefully it's coming from right around the corner. You're not having this stuff shipped from long distances. Oftentimes, native stone that, particularly if it is not a stone that is used in your area, is mined from one place, trucked and hauled to another place, a uh, wholesaler, and then trucked and hauled to your job. So what can you do with it? There are all kinds of landscape projects you can do with it. As I mentioned, you can build anything flat like a terrace. You can use it for, it's great for pathways. You can even use it for roads, driveways. It's permeable so that when the rain falls, it will be absorbed between these, in these areas between the concrete. So unlike a concrete driveway where everything will flow off of the concrete, that's another green feature. You can build walls. As I said, we had a little fire pit here, garden walls. Uh, you can retain a hillside. You don't want to go too high on it. but Okay, here's another view of a little garden wall. And there's a, n a number of ways you can do this. You can uh, fill these cracks here. You could stucco the whole thing to get a smooth wall. You can see this has the mortar is filled on the top, but not so much here on the sides. You can leave the aggregate of the concrete shown. It's very easy to chip it up. I've seen people put you know, bricks and tile and other kind of decorative pieces in here. The only limit is your imagination. Here's the end of an actual concrete driveway, which in this case was required by the fire department. But all the pathways to the house are the urban creek. Okay, so how do you install it? It's actually quite easy. If this, We'll look at a cut section here. If this is the ground, you're simply cutting out the, the soil a couple inches deeper than the concrete and you want to put a little bed of sand in here. Depending on the size of your concrete, if it's all pretty uniform at say three inches, you might want to just go four inches deep. But if you, it, it's more typical that you would have different sizes 
you know, you might have a chunk that is deeper on one side, something like that. It's easy to deal with, too. You simply stick your pieces in here, level off the top. If you have a piece that's a little bit deeper, you simply chunk out the ground below there and fit it in. You use the sand to level it up. So you might have to push a little sand underneath one piece. And you just fill in your pieces all the way across. And presto, you have a path. Or if you're doing a driveway, you might want to put a slight crown on it so that if water comes on here, it drains off to the sides. And if you're doing a wall, let's say we have a little slope here, you simply, again, you always want to make sure that you have decent soil. Obviously, if you have really muddy, mucky soil, you may have to dig it out. You could even put a concrete footing in there if you wanted to. But you just want to dig down your soil anywhere from six inches to a couple feet until you get to sol something solid bearing here. And then you, you can put some sand in. You simply start putting your chunks in. And then you, you fill mortar between each piece and start to level it off. If you're retaining soil on this side, you don't want your, your wall to go up more than about 3 feet, 36 inches, at least not without some engineering details. Uh, one way if you wanted to retain this was you, you could actually use a thicker wall at the bottom or even slope this wall, cant this wall back slightly so that it goes into the hill. So that's the second of our 50 tips. Let's do it now. Get out there and make this your weekend project. Put in a couple urban creep paths. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.